Good morning, hello and welcome to Friday at this, the Goodwood Festival of Speed. This, uh, the 30th anniversary, the 30 years of celebration, and we're here in front of the magnificent Goodwood House, and indeed the central feature, celebrating 75 years of Porsche. We are celebrating just so much over the next four days, not least that David Green is standing alongside me. How are you? Good morning. Yes, we've got a lovely 356 hovering just above our heads there. <laughs> it's been a fantastic first day. Thursday was one of the busiest, well, the busiest Thursday I've ever seen at the Festival of Speed. And today we get into the real action. Shootout times on the hill. A little bit of mixed weather, but crossing the fingers for sun. Yeah, it's a little cool. There is some drizzle in the air as well. We are expecting some rain, which could make things a little bit interesting. But first, as was tradition here at the Festival of Speed yesterday morning, the Duke of Richmond opened the show. And here are some of those best moments. He gets me every time, just so cute. But anyway, Friday, here is what is in store for us. Batch one goes off first, as David mentioned, we have timed runs today as we look to the Sunday shootout. The weekend gets a little bit spicier. Tin Top Drift Rally and WRC at 8.30 a.m. kicking things off. The man at NASCAR, sport races, 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 Lotus, Lotus, Aaron, GP, Greats and MotoGP. The Red Arrows once again at 11.15 and Porsche 75 at 11.40. And into the afternoon of running, we again have a Porsche 75 celebration moment. 60 years, of course, of the 911 to the supercars, first glance of road bikes. Porsche 75 once again, Lotus McLaren. I mean, just names so synonymous, synonymous with the history of motorsport. Into batch two, Le Mans NASCAR sport races once again. Takes you all the way to 3.10 p.m. Absolutely action-packed all day. And we look into the towards the evening. Time practice at 3.50. Keep an eye on those times ahead of Sunday. Goodwood 75, 75 years of motorsport here. Drift car a tin tops rally. That'll be a lot of fun, won't it, at 5.15. And then supercar run at batch 6A, 5.50 p.m. And we finish things off for the day. First glance on road bikes at 6.30 p.m. Oof, action packed, isn't it, David, for this Friday? Uh, and it when the festival really begin, begins to get into full swing here, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Well, it traditionally Friday, first time to run up the hills. I think it's going to be a bit tentative out there. There's a little bit of moisture on the oil will be coming through the track, but we're going to see some really fast runs up the hill. Yeah, I think we will. And let's take a look back as well on yesterday and what we saw. Uh, Lamborghini launching a new car. Hyundai Ioniq also launching as well. And the Red Arrows themselves, stunning. Uh, display yesterday. We're expecting more of that again today, you see here. And actually, you can hear uh, the commander talking through exactly what they're doing, all the routines, the choreographing. It's just astonishing how much work goes into these displays. Well, Red Hour is a constant feature here at the Festival of Speed. And, you know, hearing that commentary from the commander and then cutting into the radio in air, well, I thought was fascinating and, you know, always amazing to watch. Yeah, so, so cool. Um, we mentioned, of course, the launch of the Hyundai Ionic yesterday. Another moment for Hyundai out on the hill itself. Uh, one of the sort of thrills and spills we had yesterday. Well, yes, the Hyundai Ionic. Jody Kidd pulled the covers off the Ionic 5N. And N's a crucial letter here. N is what M is to motorsport. And you see this car here, look. The straw bales really doing their work. Got very good. Went through one, two, three, four covers. This, fortunately, wasn't the 5N. This is one of the other end cars, very quick cars. I think it just reminds us how dangerous and tough this hill climb is. And that's a Mulcom, the famous off-camber right-hander. Got that a little bit wrong, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, a little bit wrong, a little bit wrong. And uh, our cameraman as well coming straight through. Uh, he was very lucky to be on the top of the tower and no harm done whatsoever, but made for some pretty spectacular shots for all of us, didn't it? Yeah, I think he had a strong cup of tea after that. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it was, it was fantastic. But it just shows you, you know, you really have to respect this hill. It's a, it's a quick run, but it's so narrow and it's so tight and so complex to drive. 
And today it's going to be even trickier as well. Greasy, slippery conditions out there. There has been some rain overnight, a little bit of drizzle this morning, and we're expecting a bit more. You went up the hill yesterday in the McLaren. Talk me through it. Well, I was very, very lucky. The 750S. Um, you can see I'm sort of enjoying myself there, giggling away. Your face. You're absolutely <laughs> loving this. Well, I don't know why McLaren decided to let me go at this car. It's the brand new, it's their very latest supercar. It's 30 kilograms lighter than the 720, 30 horsepower higher. That's why it's called the 750. Super, super quick, relentless acceleration up the hill there. Really, really good fun. And I brought it back in one piece, which I think is the main thing. I think that is the main thing. Look at your face. You're just living a dream, aren't you? <laughs> it's hard not to enjoy that, I have to say. Yeah, beaming smile there. Absolutely love it. Um, and today, what have we got to look forward to? Besides, of course, time runs, we're going to see cars, past, present, indeed future, uh, taking to the hill and indeed being unveiled, being shown all around this far site. Well, yeah, and I've got something special, I have to say again. Another one up the hill. Aston Martin Valkyrie F1 car. It's where the marriage of Aston Martin and Red Bull, the design guru Adrian Newey has designed this car. It looks incredible. You can see through the car in places. No huge wing, but just amazing aerodynamics underneath. Basically F1 car for the road. V12, 6.5 litre. That's going to be, I'm hoping for sunshine for that, I have to say. Yeah, we've got our fingers crossed. The, the coats may come off a little bit later and we will see some sunshine creeping through. Uh, there are the conditions here with us. Ed Foster, as ever, is poised, waiting at the top of the hill to speak to each and every driver he can. Ed, good morning. How's the weather up there? Well, good morning from the top paddock. The weather actually is lovely. It's dry so far. And I'm standing at the entrance to the top paddock and the cars come in here. If you follow me, we'll, we'll head down. They come in round here and then up to the top. And in the first class, we've obviously got all the rally cars. We've got the drift cars as well. Now the drift cars will come in here. They get the, the their back out here and then drift all the way around those straw bales. And you might not be able to see on the screens, but up here, there is loads of tarmac down. Uh, loads of rubber down on that tarmac because they do massive donuts. And if you want to see close-up action, this top paddock is such a good place to see it. As I said, we've got the drift cars, we've got the rally cars, and we've got the tin tops. It is a fantastic way to start Friday morning. We've got so much competition today as well with the shootout and all the competition cars. So I, for one, can't wait. And long may it remain like this with no rain. Oh, absolutely, Ed. Thank you very much indeed. We just heard the roar of some engines. Cars are out there about to prepare themselves to get up that hill. And as we say, the time runs are beginning. Keep your eyes on the clock. We can now head to our very first action of the day with your commentators, Ben Edwards and Bruce Jones.
Tom Christensen, uh, I think last year you were driving a pre-war auto union, and now this year this. Um, tell us about it, because it's an amazing machine. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, it's an amazing machine. It's the, it's the S1 Hunitron, uh, which Audi built together with, uh, with Ken Block, which he used for these, um, yeah, the fantastic moon, uh, movies with, uh, with his uh, Hoonigan team. Um, and yeah, I, I wasn't supposed to drive this, of course. So uh, we miss Ken. Um, we miss Ken a lot, and we are racing for uh, for him. And when I, Audi asked me to to come and drive it up the hill, I mean, uh, yeah, I didn't expect it to be raining like now. Uh, but nevertheless, this is the first run done, and uh, it's a uh, it's a great weapon, very powerful, uh, incredibly powerful. Um, and very agile, and um, I, I love that part of that. Normally, I'm try I'm trained to go as fast from A to B, but try to do it with style. I have a huge respect for for what Ken and his uh, his team did, and um, it's a uh, it's really a, yeah it's a great privilege uh, for to be asked to uh, to drive it. What I loved also is that when you arrived, Matthias Ekstrom and Travis Pastrana were give giving you abuse for not doing enough donuts. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I did I did donuts, but I will do more. This is a, this is a promise. This was my my first run, and I think we uh, did I do one or two. Uh, we we can count that. Obviously, I had a, a beautiful co-driver next to me, so I will ask her how what she is saying, what she thinks about that uh, a bit later. Cheers, Tom. Thank you. Oh, it's fantastic to see you again. You were just saying you haven't been to the Festival of Speed since 2010. Probably a lot's changed. Uh, it seems like the track is still the same, more or less. And actually, that time as well, I was just uh, up here, you know, on the on the rally track. So uh, it was actually my debut uh, driving up the hill. And how was it? Because it's it's quite narrow. It's narrow and uh, started to be quite wet as well. So uh, discovering the road, yeah, it's smart to leave some margin. And it's fantastic to see these modern rally cars. Um, just tell us a little bit about your machine. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it, uh, let's say. Uh, life is going on and uh, now we are having some electric power as well, uh, you know, uh, adding to combustion. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's quite a fun and, and obviously when a high grip like this, uh, it gives quite a good power. Well, look, enjoy the weekend. Thank you, for sure. Holly, it's absolutely fantastic to see you here. Um, Colin's daughter, you just come up in one of his cars. It must be a real treat every time. Honestly, it never quite gets old, and this is my first time here at Goodwood, so to come up the hill for the first time in one of Dad's cars, it's just a real honour. And there's quite a few of his cars here as well, so it is a lovely celebration. Yeah, for sure. I'm looking forward to having a little walk around later, take in all the sights and see how many I can spot. <laughs> and you, you've got a sort of amateur racing driver named Kareen Chandok driving you. How was he? Oh, uh, maybe I could do, use some lessons or two. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably too good at going in a straight line. He needs to get sideways more. I know, that's what he said on the way up. He was like, was that OK? And I was like, better than I could have managed. Just go for it. <laughs> well, Holly, have a great weekend and thanks for chatting. I certainly will do. Thank you. Emma tells me, I might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a mess. I've been in love. Hear them start and then.
Well, lots of fun then. Thrills and spills as batch one heads up the hill. Thanks to Ed, to Becky, to Ben and Bruce. Uh, David Green and I, I mean, I'm almost ashamed to say, we are sheltering from the rain. There's no two ways about it. We are undercover. Uh, but that has not deterred the masses who are streaming in on what is another sold out day here at the Festival of Speed. Over 200,000 expected this weekend, making it the second biggest motorsport event in the UK behind the British Grand Prix. Uh, and we're very, very happy to be part of that. David, we are a sheltering in Lamborghini, aren't we? Not the worst place to be. It's all right. And the Italian thing. coffee's good on a morning, I think. It, it's very good, actually. Uh, the hypercar yesterday, SC63, that was unveiled. Um, and you want to talk about this car behind us. And there are so many people around it. I feel like I'm back in a Formula One pit lane where they film a human wall around a car if I'll there's a problem. I'll just get out <laughs> the way then to show you that car. I mean, you know, as we've said, Festival Speed all about seeing new cars. And for many people, this will be the first time they've seen this car. Brand new car from Lamborghini. It's never been on its dynamic debut yet, but it looks quick standing still, doesn't it? It's um, absolutely fantastic. It's their first hybrid V12. So plug-in hybrid, but not really like your sort of Toyota Priuses. This has made it to a <laughs> huge V12 engine. It's going to be extremely quick, fantastic car. And, you know, we'll see that going up the hill, I think, maybe next year. Oh, fantastic. Look how many people are taking photos um, because it is spectacular to look at. As you said, it looks quick as well. And Lamborghini with such a big presence here at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Yeah, absolutely. And it's what it's all about, Festival of Speed. We, you know, we talk about it being a de facto car show. And you know, as much as we see all the shootouts and everything else, it's a really important place to launch new cars, both in the UK and globally. And, you know, seeing this car for the first time on stand is a big deal for for all these people coming today. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so what else do we have to look forward to on Friday then? We've seen batch one. We'll have some more going up the hill very soon. And conditions continue to prove tricky out there. And that hill is narrow at the best of times. Now it's narrow and slippery. Yeah, we've got lots of cars going up the hill. We've got lots of celebrations. We're celebrating Lotus's anniversary today. We're celebrating lots of different things. Lamborghini 60th, I mean, we haven't even mentioned that. There's, there's so many anniversaries this year. We'll be seeing a lot of the cars going up the hill. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Uh, we will be catching up with the likes of McLaren, of course, their 60th anniversary, Lotus as well, Porsche 75, the true celebration here with that incredible central feature by the Goodwood House. We'll catch up with them a little bit later on. Um, David, you're going up the hill today, remind me. Aston Martin Valkyrie, not too bad. Not too oh, bad. it's all right, isn't it? Formula One car for the road. I mean, really, really special car. It's been driven up. There's a Spider version, a Coupe version. Darren Turner's driving it. Peter Dumbrecht at the moment. They're taking the car up the hill. I'll be taking over from one of them this afternoon. So, no pressure, no pressure. Exactly. Darren Turner taught me through that incredible Spider yesterday. Stunning, stunning car. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed to you, David. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back very soon. And I'll test you. I might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a messy. Jaguar I-Pace. With fast charging technology and a range of up to 292 miles. Search I-Pace.
<laughs> Good morning, hello, and welcome to Goodwood 2023. This is the Action Sports Arena.
Jensen Button, lovely to see you at the Festival of Speed again. Um, it's, this is a Le Mans celebration, 100 years, but there's no doubting that this really belongs in a NASCAR class. You did a lot of work to it to get it ready for Le Mans, but it's still very nascar isn't it? <laughs> and that's the whole idea. You know, it's supposed to be a celebration of, of NASCAR. It's 75 years of NASCAR as well. Um, so pretty amazing that we could take a, a cup car, slightly different, to Le Mans. And uh, the whole idea was to keep it looking very NASCAR. Obviously, it has more downforce than a NASCAR, slightly bigger rear wing. Diffuser's a little bit different. A um, bit more power. It's got paddle shifts, not a sequential gearbox. But I have to say, it's the most drivable car I've ever driven. It's just such a pleasure to drive. It really is. Apart from it getting really hot at the bottom of the hill, and I was like, OK, let's just go slow at the start. Um, and we're on wets. It's great. But nobody else is. So we catch them really quickly. So I was hanging back, give it a space, and have some fun. But um, no, this is a weapon. The, the, whole, the whole team, Hendrick Motorsport, um, and obviously NASCAR, who put this all together, have done such a good job with this car. And, uh, you know, to see the footage of it and the love that it got in Le Mans, it really does mean a lot to be part of the project. Now, for a retired Formula One driver, you seem to be busier than ever. Just just run us through exactly what you're doing. Because it might try and do a condensed version, because otherwise we'll be here for 10 minutes. Uh, well, in terms of racing, I'm I'm... Obviously, we did Le Mans, which is amazing in this car. Um, but I'm also racing in NASCAR in the Cup Series, which is the top category of NASCAR. Uh, I've done two races so far. Uh, one at Cota, the the um, Austin track that we race in F1. Uh, and the second one was on the streets of Chicago, which was a couple of weeks ago, which was amazing. Super cool. Um, but I think people will be surprised how much talent there is in that series. They used to go in run ovals, yes, but you put them on a street circuit, they're very, very competitive. So loved it. Great experience. Um, and apart from that, there's one other thing I might be doing this year, I can't say. And uh, looking at doing more racing next year, but maybe a full championship. And you were here with the, with the Radford kind of Pikes Peak car, the sort of rallycross car as well. Um, so here I'm driving the Garage 56 car, which I'm sat in right now. Uh, driving our Radford, which was supposed to be in this group, but isn't. We don't have wet tires for it here yet because uh, the, the car's just arrived from Pikes Peak. It went via Chicago. Um, so this afternoon, I'll be driving the Radford on hopefully wet tires. Uh, but it's a weapon. It's, it's what went up at Pikes Peak. Um, it, it won its category in 937. Anything under 10 minutes at Pikes Peak is pretty impressive. So great job by Tanner Faust and the whole team. So I'll be driving that car. Uh, I'm also driving the Lotus Avaya tomorrow, the 2,000 horsepower electric Lotus, which is beautiful. I actually have one coming as well. And the last car I'll be driving, which is Sunday, is the uh, Williams 8C, which is Keke Rosberg's Williams. So looking forward to that. I think from 1983, if I'm correct. Amazing. Well, you're a busy man, so I'll leave you to it. And you're lovely and dry as well. You've done this before. Yes. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Sorry about the weather. We'll try and make it fun for you. Catch you later. Check this out. It hasn't been such a long time since people first started shopping online, and it was easy to keep up with the clicks. Little by little by little by more, the clicks added up to be more than the stores, and e-tailers worked harder than ever before because they had to keep up with the clicks.
No time for borders. Gotta stay in control to stay in the flow and continue to grow. But we'll help you. Keep up with the clicks. See him and Moss drive up the hill together was a pretty emotional moment. And again, grown men were crying. It's like, it really is a, a big moment. And we lifted Jenks. He was too frail to even come out of the car. We picked him up out of the body of the, of the SLR and brought him actually in here. And he lay on this, he lay on this very sofa for a while, kind of recovering from the whole, the whole experience.
to hear them start and then. <laughs> You're built different. Breathing new life into broken. Taking matters into your own hands. Assembling big dreams from the small things. Never stopping until you find the right part at the right price. That's the eBay way. I can't stop smiling. Well, everybody said it's so exciting. You get to see all these cars, not just look at them, but you get to see them in action. That's cool. Goodwood Revival is all about make, do, and mend, vintage style, not vintage values, and of course, sustainability. Not only is there the motor racing, but it's everything else. The shopping, it's the fun fair, it's the look, it's the period, and that is what the Goodwood Revival is. It's just a fantastic day out. Nearly blast off. Look at that. So the suction down to the track. Max Chilton then looks pretty calm in there at the moment, but he won't be in the minute once this thing builds up. Two it's... turn one, look at the way it sucks itself straight down onto the track. Yeah, you can see how the fan in the back that creates 2,000 kilos of downforce. It grips the car down. It's got a thousand horsepower. It's a tiny car as well. 3.51 seconds over the first hundred meters, 17.34 seconds at intermediate one, and I can't hardly read it out as quick as he's getting to these points at the moment. Ooh, there he goes, 28.24, 28.24 at intermediate two, and he's already heading up towards the line. So what's it gonna be over the line? Is it gonna be a new record? Of course it must be a new record, surely. 39.08, He is the fastest ever man on the Sunday. What a brilliant performance by him. Oh, what a scintillating performance that was last year by Max Chilton and this, the McMurphy. And I'm very lucky to be standing next to it right now. Max joining me here in the Goodwood 75, celebrating 75 years of motorsport here at Goodwood. Max, it must be pretty good to be back in this incredible piece of machinery about to go up the hill, albeit slightly different conditions. Yes, it's absolutely an honour. Um, Goodwood are always so lovely to everyone. They've always welcomed me with open arms and the team. The car is just fantastic. Um, last year was one of those truly special moments in my career. It was probably the most stressful day of my life and then <laughs> one of the best afternoons of my life. Um, and yeah, I'll be coming back for many, many more years. I've been coming since I was a child um, and to be back here for a second year with McMurtry, the year that we've launched our first new Spearling Pure uh, to the public is, is really exciting. And I'm sat here behind Joachim Mass and a 300 SLR, which is just pretty special. 
Yeah, there's some incredible cars and bikes all along this start line paddock at the moment. Uh, Max, can you try and talk us through the sensation you had going up the hill last year in this McMurtry? You know what, it was, it was basically like a roller coaster that I was in control of, but I had nerves, but I didn't really have time to think about the nerves once I'd started because this thing is just an absolute machine. And within a couple of seconds, you're at turn one. And I just love watching the footage back because the commentators couldn't even keep up with it. The camera, <laughs> cameramen couldn't, were struggling to keep up with it. Um, and then the crowd's re reactions that I got sent after the event were just incredible. There was this gasp of what have we just seen and then this round of applause. So it was a really special moment. We're obviously not back in the time trial this year. We've got to let everyone else have a show. Um, but we're, we're here to put a nice uh, demonstration on surrounded by these amazing cars and bikes either side of me. Yeah, it's going to be quite the display, isn't it? Um, conditions as well. How difficult will these be to drive? Obviously, it's narrow up there and now it's very greasy as well. Yes, it is uh, very slick, but the one luxury with this car is it's got two tons of downforce from the moment I set off. So even just coming down from the dummy grid, I was trying to brake and lock the thing up and it's got plenty of grip, but I won't be going for a time. I'll, I might stop outside the house and do a launch so people can see how quick this car is, even in the, even in the uh, wet conditions. But yeah, we're here to put on a nice show for everyone and they can admire the car. We certainly will be doing that. Thank you so much, Max. It's brilliant to see you once again. I'm actually going to grab a chat with the driver in front of you, Jochen Mass as well. Uh, coming to you now. Hello, sir. You've got the McMurtry, the course record breaker behind you. How are you feeling? Sorry, sorry. You've got the McMurtry behind you, the course record breaker. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel good, you know. It's very slippery, so you have to watch it a bit because the tyres, they're not exactly old, but they're not warm either, so you have to watch it. How much of an honour is it to be racing in Goodwood 75 here? How much what? Of an honour is it to be here, Goodwood 75, doing a demonstration like this? Ah, it's, it's fantastic. I'm so happy that we started again, you know, that we can do it. And um, this silly two years are behind us. And um, no, it's wonderful to, to be here again and see the enthusiasm of the people, which is quite amazing. And of course, you know so many of them, and they know you. And, um, you know, sort of we age together. <laughs> this is nice. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm very, very happy. And obviously, I mean, you can see people, despite the weather, they love it. They come anyway. Yeah, it's brilliant to see you here. Thank you very much, Jochen. Great celebration. Well, batch three, the best of Cuba 75 about to get underway. So we'll head back to commentary.
Duncan Pittaway joins me now in front of the Beast of Turin and we've just been discussing uh, its characteristics here in the rain, Duncan. It's fabulous in the rain. It may seem bizarre with it having bicycle tyres and, and no brakes at all, well, relatively no brakes, but honestly in the rain it's fabulous because in the dry it feels like it wants to fall over and in the rain it, it slides around, which is great. Oh, it slides around. And you mentioned no brakes at all. Just a little bit more detail on that one. Well, yeah, it has a foot brake, but all the foot brake does is set the, the gearbox on fire. But it, so all it has is a handbrake. But the handbrake is great. Uh, initially, anyway. But no, it's great. Oh, my goodness me. Well, best of luck. Thanks very much. <laughs> we're just delighted to be here. And we're running on synthetic fuel, which is the most unenvironmentally friendly car on the planet, is now the most environmentally friendly car on the planet. Yeah, we'll take it. Thank you, Duncan. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Cheers.
Andrew, it's always such a treat to see the Napier route, and it's quite an honour to drive it, I imagine, but not the best conditions. No, it is, it is it's absolutely an honour. It, it never gets old at all, but uh, the conditions today are... Um, uh, had, I took it steady, let's put it that way. Now, this car obviously famously has the Brooklyn's lap record at 143, I think, 0.44 miles an hour, but after, didn't it then test aircraft parachutes as well? Yeah, it did indeed. So, as, as well as its Brooklyn record, which is exactly as you said, uh, it also went out to Bonneville and broke the world 24-hour endurance record, averaging over 150 miles an hour for 24 hours back in 1936. Yeah, post-war it was then used um, by GQ parachutes up at uh, uh, Dunsfold Park, um, testing aircraft arresting parachutes, so the big parachutes trapped on the back. They'd run down the runway at 150 miles an hour and then just pop the parachute at the back to make sure it worked. Extraordinary. I don't envy the people who had to test, test those, but thank you so much for bringing it. A pleasure. In my test, I might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a messy. I've been in love. them starred and then honestly it makes my heart sing i can't stop smiling well everybody said it's so exciting you get to see all these cars not just look at them but you get to see them in action that's cool goodwood revival is all about make do and mend vintage style not vintage values and of course sustainability not only is there the motor racing, but it's everything else. The shopping, it's the fun fair, it's the look, it's the period, and that is what the good revival is. It's just a fantastic day out. Good morning, hello, and welcome to Goodwood 2023. This is the Action Sports Arena. I continue to shelter from the rain and I found Cameron and Georgia who equally are undercover as well but well protected a nice poncho yeah, and raincoat going on <laughs> um, you're, it's your first time here at Goodwood what are your impressions large there's a lot here it's kind of overwhelming yeah it is there's so much to see Georgia what about you what are you looking forward to seeing today um, I like all the older cars I think that's what I'm most looking forward to yeah, I mean, look, we've got a Mustang behind us here. It's so cool to see. It's really, yeah, it's brilliant to see. Um, the rain hasn't deterred you then? No. Into here, definitely, but not, not today, no. And what do you drive? I have a Mazda 3. And Georgia? I've got a little Fiat 500. Oh, an absolute classic. I love it. And how long have you been into your motorsport? You you imagine somewhat of a petrol head? Yeah, so I've really only, last couple of years since I've been driving, um, I never really cared about cars since so I was about 17 passed my test and I've absolutely loved cars ever since. Oh, I love that. And Georgia, has it rubbed off on you as well? Yeah, um, my family are big petrol heads, especially my dad. He's got a nice supercar, so yeah, it's always been in the family, so I'm, yeah. Oh, fabulous. Well, there'll be much to see, for you guys to see and do today then. Thank you very much for talking and we'll keep dry under here for now, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>
obsessed with me. Might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a messy. I've been in love. The hill here at Goodwood is one of the most iconic bits of motor racing these days. And here I am in the 1962 World Championship winning car. Off I go. Graham Hill won the 1962 World Championship in this wonderful BRM. Through the boulevard of trees, coming up to the first couple of right-handers now. It's a fantastic sight as you come through this bit of the track with the house on the left, this beautiful sculpture at the corner of your eye, but you're firmly focusing on the track, the lines of hay bales with the sea of people behind it. Up in a Malcolm, a tricky left-hander. And as you start to climb up, this amazing view of the flint wall looms ahead. Around the flint wall, give it a white bird. Be nice and safe. This comes from the Collier collection in America. It is exactly how Graham Hill drove it back in the 60s. To be honest, it's the first Formula One car driven with no seatbelts, which is quite extraordinary. I'm bracing myself up against the side of the car to come through the final corner and through the finish line. A fantastic bit of Formula One history to drive here at Goodwood up the hill and show all of you at home a little bit of just what we see from the cockpit.
very, very dirty, very, very quickly. Yeah. I spun it round the bottom there and that really just made made it all... Uh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you very much indeed. I'm just interrupting um, some pre-hill climb. That's okay, Miss Guzzi. Uh, Mark Janet, hello. In this beautiful Scuderia Ferrari, talk me through the car and welcome to Goodwood. Thank you very much. Yes, so happy. This is the SF71H, so it's the, the hybrid one. It's the first time we bring the hybrid to Ferrari. Sorry, I didn't take the hands out. <laughs> it's well balanced. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's very nice. It really is. It's so it's special. It's been so many years now I've come to Goodwood and um, and I think it's nice to show the yeah, the latest, the hybrid cars, very powerful, you know, and I, with so much aerodynamic appendices, this is this is one of the fastest Ferraris that was built for of the new era. Yeah, and it's absolutely stunning. How much are you looking forward to getting up the hill in the rain as well? Well, you know, we normally I use the wet the wet tires anyway, even in the dry, so that's that's okay even in the wet. Um, there'll be some more sliding probably, you have to be a bit more careful. But it's not raining so much, it's just damp. So those tyres are perfectly for those conditions. It's just damp. That's something a racing driver would say. I would not call this just damp. That's very wet for me. Uh, Goodwood, how much does it mean to be back here as well in this celebration of motorsport? Yeah, this year is special also. We have we, we have the Ferrari 499, the one that won Le Mans. Um, and honestly, this is an event. To my friends, I always tell them that once in a lifetime, they have to come to Goodwood. To me, Goodwood is similar to coming to Indianapolis or to... Monaco Grand Prix or to Le Mans, you know, you have to see it at least once in a lifetime. If you don't repeat, of course, most of the people repeat. I have repeated for so many years. But yeah, it's, it's a special year this year for Goodwood. Uh, 75th anniversary also for Porsche, you know, we, we won Le Mans after 50 years. So there's a lot of numbers that make that, that event this year very, very special. Yeah, there are so many anniversaries, 75 years of motorsport here um, and indeed the 30 years of the Festival of Speed as well. What else are you up to over the next weekend, few uh, days of this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to just walking around, seeing some of those cars that you only see once in a lifetime. I just saw before uh, some of the Ferraris that honestly, this is the only day of the year that they run. So I just look forward to after this run, just walk around and look at the, some of the cars and the motorbikes. I also like 
a lot to see the motorbikes and some of the uh, my of my heroes, you know. I saw this morning, I don't know, Freddie Spencer, uh, Casey Stoner, you know, I, I'm a big follower of MotoGP and I like to see them ri ri riding, in that case, some of their, their own bikes. Yeah, soak it all up. Uh, Mark Janae, thank you so much. That was like a love letter to Goodwood. Absolute pleasure to speak to you. Enjoy your run. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, let's head back to the commentators as we wait for this next batch to head up. Colin Chapman, the private plane commuting chairman of the Lotus Group of Companies, knows the meaning of success. Jim Clark, the first man home. has become a success story for Chapman and for Britain. but it doesn't feel big behind the wheel. The quality of the interior is...
past isn't something I really think about. I only think about the next race, and I only look into the future. This is the story of a young man from New Zealand. The name, of course, is Bruce McLaren. What's the secret of success? Experience is tremendously important in motor racing. Got one from very nasty one indeed. The important thing for me is to drive and to win, and I did that. What a fantastic finish! beyond what I could even understand. And 
Y'all going for the stars.
2021, like maybe. a couple of punters braving the rain they were posing in front of this incredible sculpture behind us here um, and actually I was drawn in by the sling as well Kaylee and Joe join me now and Kaylee uh, this is an accident from yesterday isn't it it is yes he uh, went pretty big and ended up with the floor so huge tricks sometimes don't go to plan and you don't get very good prizes <laughs> Joe <laughs> Joe, to explain, was in the gas arena yesterday, the Goodwood Action Sports, BMX rider, pretty windy, and you risked it. I did risk it, yeah. It's uh, it's just for fun, isn't it? We come to Goodwood every year, and it's an exciting it's a highlight of the year, so you bring the best for the fans and do what you can, don't you? And I went a little too hard this time and overdid myself. Uh, but how much are you able to enjoy Goodwood today, despite the rain and quite obvious injuries? 
Oh, it's a wonderful place to be. We've met quite a few people that are happy to take photos of us and we'll take <laughs> photos of them too. You make some new friends here every year, regardless of the rain. It's a great place to be. I love these sort of art sculptures that are around the place as well. So let's go see what else is in store. Yeah, it's really cool, isn't it? And Joe, you're not in too much pain. You're doing all right. No, I'm all right. I'll manage. I'm a tough guy and I've been here before in this situation a good few times. So yeah, we'll be all right. And up until that point, I'd imagine things are very impressive over there. We had a little look less yesterday, and it's amazing. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's the best show in the world to be part of. It's such a good team. You, know, so you meet your heroes, and yeah, it's real good. Best place ever to be. Oh, I love it. Well, look, get well soon. Heal fast. Thank um, and thank you very much for stopping to chat to us in the rain. Cheers, thank guys. You today, guys. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Well, the umbrellas are still up, the, uh, the Pacamax are on along with the coats, so it is still coming down out there on this uh, Friday here at Goodwood. Festival of Speed celebrating 30 years and here at the Forest Rally stage where we uh, enjoy over 50 years of the World Rally Championship, which launched back in 1973. And over 35 countries have staged rounds since it is the highest class of international racing but you can just see and what we're showcasing here across the weekend is how far rallying and rally cars have developed through the different regulations group a group b all the way uh, through to wrc and the modern era uh, with teams free to compete in cars now complying all the way group one to uh, groups rally one to rally five regulations so you really do get uh, an excellent mix we've had a rally one and rally two car which currently top the timings Thierry Neville in the Hyundai Rally 1 car the fastest of them all Yari Matti Latvala has been round a few times in the tour to Yaris Rally 2 car uh, which is currently second ahead of the Hyundai i20 RS the MGS 2000 is fourth and Sebastian Auger who has also been round a few times in his tour to Yaris Rally 1 car rounding out the top five in front of a Celica and MG Metro a couple of MG Metros actually. The Proton uh, Pre uh, Pert is ninth in the top 10 again, rounded out by an MG Metro. So those MG Metros, uh, pretty pretty nippy out there. But the uh, the uh, six um, R4. Yeah, not, naturally aspirated, so um, very easy to get traction through all four driven wheels. So we look back now at a car that we've seen for the first time this morning. Car number four, which is David Wright with Jane Nickel. Uh, David Wright, uh, for those of you who may know, uh, owned uh, an ex-Works Ford Focus, an ex-Car Science Ford Focus. David will be uh, somebody who will be in the shout for the shootout. As we look at Mike Rimmer, uh, I was about to say Mike Rimmer owns one of the BMW M3s, famous with Loctite sponsorship, way back 1987 when he went through the gate on the Manx International. Yep, that's the Subaru making its way around and uh, Ford Fiesta R5, as, as Ab was mentioning there from 2018, getting ready on the start line as uh, part of the contemporary rally car brigade that we have on offer there along with uh, the Fiesta R2. Uh, we've got a Proton Iris R5 as well and a Ford Fiesta Rally 2. Elliot Payne uh, will be taking to the wheel of that, we hope. And uh, the 2023, as we've seen, Hyundai i20 R5 with James Williams at the wheel, which has already been round a fair few times. There is the Ford Fiesta R5 waiting on the start line, getting the all clear. The revs rise, he lights up the rear tires and off he goes to make his way around this Forest Rally stage. This, the 2018 Ford Fiesta R5, David Wright in that kicking up the dust and into the trees we go navigates the tight entrance through the two tree trunks a lot of people have been coming a cropper of the banking there and a slight nip from the fiesta but not too much enough to catch the car but he carries it going forward and uh, through and round approaching uh, burns and torini then into quattro the fiesta goes and the escort mark one uh, 
which was the first Boreham built Works RS 1600, driven by Roger Clark. Uh, this time uh, we have Josie Rimmer with Alistair McRae. Josie and Alistair swapping seats as Josie gets to grips with manual transmission and the vagaries of the rally stage. As we just look back at Josie over the jump. Lovely bit of air from uh, from Josie. And uh, dealing with these tricky conditions uh, we have here with the rain coming down. Uh, the Nissan 56 currently making uh, its way uh, through. That's the Nissan 240RS from 1984 Group B car, a direct evolution of the previous uh, works offering that was the Datsun Violet GTS, um, designed very much to, to make it easy to drive and maintain at the time, at least, with Anthony Walker uh, taking that around currently, the 56 Nissan 240RS, you should see making its way through the back end of the Forest Rally stage currently. On the start line is uh, car number 46, driven by Steve Chamberlain, as we cut back now to David Wright and Jane Nickel. Oh, there's the Fiesta in in red as well. It's actually giving me um, flashbacks. My first car was a, was a Ford Fiesta, not quite as powerful as, as the R5, uh, but certainly the I think it was 1. 1. 1.4, 1.6 litre yep. uh, Ford Fiesta. Um, a great first car. And again, it comes back to that conversation we were having as well about the manufacturers and the production and the relatability of it. My first car was a Ford Fiesta. What am I automatically drawn to within the uh, within the rally circus? Yeah, that was probably the Ford Fiesta. Yeah. And that, that's how it works. Anthony Walker in the ex Blydenstein uh, Nissan 240RS. Uh, different kind of car in that it operated a steering box instead of a rack. Um, but synonymous with Terry Cabey, Louise Aitken Walker, Tony Pond drove one in Corsica. Uh, Some familiar Marlboro uh, branding as well on that. Very reminiscent of the, uh, the Senna Prost McLaren F1 days with the, uh, the orange intermixed with the white on that Nissan. Steve Chamberlain on the start line in his Mitsubishi. And uh, Steve has been here in the past with an X-Works Hyundai Accent WRC uh, from Cheshire. And this is the third time he's been here. It's been built at Group N specification. And he's done the Network Q three times. But again, a synonymous layout in terms of sponsorship from Rally Art. Rally Art operating out of their base in rugby. and run by the, the late, great Andrew Cowan, as we cut back to Flying Finn. And uh, Harry's red fiesta over the jump. <laughs> I wish. Uh, nicely controlled there from the, the Fiesta R5. So have you been in a rally car except only the Land Rover Defender, because that was the only one I could actually fit in. For, the, for those who don't know what I look like, quite tall, six foot five, I really struggled to get in any other one because some, you know, the 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 the, the opening gauge of some of these co-driver doors is not a lot. So the def even the Defender was a bit of a tight squeeze. I found. I think we're going to have to try and get you into one before Sunday. I think if our producer's listening, surely there's a VT in that somewhere. To <laughs> well, I, I mean, we we'll need to get your license and that, but I think it might be a good thing to do um, in terms of give you that experience of genuinely what it is like. I've experienced it. Tony's experienced it. Um, so we'll, it, it, uh, we'll, we'll make it an ongoing project for the moment. Well, absolutely. Well, even in, in this Defender that I was in last year, we're looking across the, the, the driver, just the how quickly he was manoeuvring his hands, where he was, where his eyes were looking. They were always the next apex along, the next two corners along. He was constantly in sort of concise control, but I was sort of amazed that he was able to kind of laugh and have a chat with me at the same time. And I was just thinking, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> We've got a tree, there's a tree on the left, hang on. But he's already seen that, he's through and gone. He's thinking about the next slight off camber bend yeah. or the next banking that's coming up that has a slight divot. So you've got to avoid that and make sure you don't catch the rear wheel. But they're so used to it. They're so ingrained in it. And they're so in sync with the car that they are driving that it's almost, it almost becomes a bit second nature to them. Yeah, it flows. Yeah, you know, uh, Connor Falvey in the Porsche 911. Um, Connor, who in the past has had James O'Brien sitting with him. Um, on coming up at the start line, we've got the Triumph TR7 V8 in the British Airways colours. 
the X Works, Rothmans, David Sutton run, uh, Ford Escort Mark II, David Brown in the Andrews Heat for Hire Mark II, the Fate 131 from the Motor and Used Road Rally Championship, and one of the McLeods is bringing out the MGS 2000. So that's coming your way if you're in the woods and wondering what's coming to you. Um, a really good, uh, the next three cars, a really good cross-section of the 70s and 80s. British Airways sponsorship uh, with Triumph adorning the roof. Of course, Tony Pond drove one of these. Roger Clark had the Sparkright sponsorship as we cut back to Steve Chamberlain out over the flying fin jump and making his way to Coopers and Stratos. Yeah, and uh, this sort of celebrating as well the dawn of, of modern rallying, really, and, uh, and the changing of regulations as... Uh, we talk about the transition of Group A to Group B and then the WRC regulations that all came into place, freeing up uh, some of uh, the limitations that were, were placed initially within Group A, allowing manufacturers and brands to really start to, to go full flow and, and bolt on some quite extreme things in there. Things like aerodynamics, we speak about it. You can see the change in bodywork and the change of aero, more power, less weight, faster cars. I mean, Group B, but when, we, when you were getting to the end of Group B, uh, it was extreme engineering. Um, certainly with the, the Lancia Delta S4, the Ford RS200, the Evolution version. But when the FIA, Jean-Marie Ballest, canned it, it, it just, it literally cut its head off. Those cars went to Rallycross, and you see here with the likes of the Audi Quattro 200, the Group A Mitsubishi Starion, where it just went back to basically the production cars and Lancia were very lucky in that their production, they were producing the Lancia Delta. Uh, it wasn't a hard thing to make an Integrale, the very early 8-valve version. And we were talking earlier about the Audi 200 quad, it was too big, too cumbersome, and that sort of, that was the death knell really for Audi and Rally in the, the 1987 onwards. Well, and it's a shame really, because you look at what they're able to produce current day you look at the the, the rally e, the dakar audi that we've seen going on there yeah. as well yeah and just just the sheer amount of um manufacturing uh, uh, prowess that goes in from all of these top brands really that are, that are so involved you look at the likes of toyota and, and hyundai as we've discussed at the very top of their game even the, the likes of, of skoda and, and you know subaru of course all these fantastic brands that really encompass making this what it is, which is a global sport. I don't think you, you see many other motorsports that have such a, a global manufacturer presence. You know, over the years, we've had Japan represented with multiple uh, countries. We've got South Korea, even with, with the likes of uh, Hyundai, along with, you know, okay, all right, there's Formula One, but I, don't, I still don't think it's on this level where you've also got your MGs. You've got British manufacturers making their way up through, uh, through the ranks. I don't think you get that anywhere else. No, and the thing about it is, when, when Group B ended in 1985, uh, 30 odd years ago, um, they haven't really used rallying as a tool. But this weekend, the original Audi Quattro that uh, Hanu Mikola drove is coming up the hill with his two sons. So we, their heritage in rallying is, re is still really important to Audi in 2023. Um, you know, from from Hanu's involvement, I think Hanu did a, a, a national rally in Sweden, 1981, and I think he won the event by 23, 24 minutes. Wow! And that was when the I remember him saying here. That was when I knew four-wheel drive was the way to go. And well, if you had to pick, then pick an era, pick a pick a year, pick a regulation that you would love, that you love the most. What would it be? From rallying, obviously. I I I think um, there'd probably be two. I mean, there'd be the very early eighties in Ireland, where X Works Mark II escorts were ruling the roost and the dawn of the Opel Skona 400 where they were coming in. But for me, the, 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 the engineering ability and craft of the, the Group B era was phenomenal. Mm. That's what they say, it's the golden era, wasn't it? That yeah, sort of I mean, some of the engineering, the, the Lancia Delta S4 was the only super and turbocharged rally car. Supercharged because from low down in revs, the supercharger kicked in straight away. And once the supercharger got up to speed, then the turbocharger kicked in and took it even further. You know, some of the engineers, I, 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 engineers amaze me, fascinate me. The, the, I, I can't comprehend you. You look at the like somebody like Adrian Newey in Formula One and just how you're able to do it time and time and time and time and time again. 
it, it's it's a it's a fascinating thing to get your head around, and then you just see the differences in what and engineers and, and aerodynamicists and mechanics can all produce when you look at them on screen in real life, the sheer difference in shape and size that we have here represented uh, at the Forest Rally stage, celebrating those wonderful over 50 years of, of, of rallying. But you go back to, you know, rally cars from the 50s before the WRC officially formed as a championship. Uh, fantastic work and uh, all the way through to, uh, to Rally Cross as well, being uh, pioneered and uh, showcased on the front line. Philip Tolomer making his way off the start. I went to go to the toilet, that's when everything started again. So I just know that that was me doing that. I just know it was sod floor that yeah. that's what happened. But yeah, it was great. It was worth the wait anyway. It's quite slippery, the Dakar, on those tires. Yes. These are going to be, these are cut slicks, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So, easy. No temperature in them. No, no. Yeah, really close. Really incredible history. This is the seed that they all yeah, look at. <laughs>
rabbit, rabbit. No, rabbit is saying fish.
I think the unique thing about Porsche and the cars that they make, it's the mix between the purity of the engineering and the beauty of the design. That whole mix is really, really something special. So it's joy to be in it and it's a joy to actually make it work and to actually feel it. How the car feels in the steering wheel really and the view out of it and everything, which are the important things. The handling of Porsche is a very particular thing. Porsche, without any doubt, are going to be a major part of the success speed. It's amazing how we've done the 50th anniversary, now we're doing the 75th, so 25 years later, here we are, we're still doing it. the only brand to have double sent and displayed four times and that shows an incredible amount of support and that we love having to evolve with all huge fans. The special moments each day are the absolute climax. The whole site turns to look at them. This year, with this fantastic sculpture, Porsche cars will come and encircle it in front of the house. There will be music, there will be these wonderful daylight fireworks and there'll be this huge, very emotional celebration of 75 years of one of the world's greatest brand. I think I've driven more Porsches than anything else at the festival speed. I'm very lucky, I've owned a few Porsches over the years, and the moment I made a little bit of money in my early 20s, I was definitely out there trying to buy myself a decent car. My favourite's got to be the original 924 Carrera GT that I owned, and I wish I still had. Carl plays a big part in most sports, his liveries are hugely memorable and Porsche liveries in particular. I mean, graphics and cars and liveries and colour, all super important. Everything a brand stands for is what the Festival Speed is all about. The joy of driving, uh, the joy of mobility. We're looking at change, we're looking at innovation technology. I mean, that's what the Festival Speed is all about and Porsche epitomizes that on every level. So fantastic to see you back here at the Festival of Speeds. Uh, quite difficult conditions on the hill at the moment. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it's not the moment we can push the most, but let's say as a Belgian driver, I kind of like uh, a good rain. <laughs> and uh, with this car, it's always a pleasure anyway, on dry, on wet. So it was pretty cool having a little bit of, uh, you know, slippy condition. Uh, but now it's not raining anymore, so I hope that the fan can enjoy it. And the racing has been going very well. Yeah, we, we have been doing some good stuff this year in the uh, World Endurance Championship. Um, we have had a uh, pole position, podiums, and uh, now we, we are just running after our first win, but uh, we keep pushing hard for it. I mean, there is no more competitive series to try and do it in. Well, you know, um, GT, GT racing in general is very competitive uh, and we are, I believe, in two of the most competitive championships in the world with the GT World Challenge and, uh, and the WEC. Uh, so we are learning a lot. And for me, uh, only when you are fighting against stronger than you, you got stronger yourself. So uh, I think we have learned a lot the last few years and, and now we, we are happy to see that we are competitive in, uh, in, in the race we are entering. Well, uh, great to see you this weekend and have a good one. Thank you.
Fly through the city. Go find the star. Run like a river. That's in your heart. You gotta find the star. Keep me like the ember. Keep me like the fire. Keep me like a color. Keep me like the night. Keep me like the ember.
got the GRDC. Reno, always fantastic to see you up here in the top paddock. Um, this is something very new from Singer, and you showed me a photo of it with sort of tape all over it so it wasn't damaged in testing. But to see it for real is something else. You must be really pleased with this. Yeah, I think we're very proud of, of the, the design and lightweight study turbo. Basically, a customer said, could we restore their 964? Kind of like DLS, but more like a turbo. And we were like, of course. I think Rob Dickinson, who started Singer and is the genius behind it. He, he had a real thing for the 934. I do too. And I think the way that he's interpreted it and put it together, it's just gorgeous, you know, with the, the fans on the wheels and everything else. And it's early days, um, but it's going to be quite something. It's three, four, five rear Michelin tires. It's crazy. And a man even of your talents must have been slightly apprehensive in the wet because this is the only one. It's, it's not like there's a, there's a warehouse full of them. We actually, I'm just thinking we do have one down on the stand, so there's two of them but at the moment, but there will be more. It's, yeah, there's not many, and it's obviously customers who want to look after their cars so they can have it back at some point. <laughs> but it's it's at that point on the hill now where it's not wet and it's very greasy, and obviously all the nice old cars drop some oil, so it's, uh, yeah, a bit of a handful. Well, well done getting it up here. Thank you. Bruno, great to see you. You've come up in the centre, which it's about five years old now, but it's, it, it doesn't look it at all. It still looks brand new. I mean, it's hard to believe it's been five years since the car has has come out, and it's uh, 
still an amazing machine, probably as fast as you can get anything on the road. So uh, pleasure to be up the hill. Today in wet conditions, not quite as pleasurable. It's quite scary in a few places, but uh, anyway, the passengers enjoy it. And you did just admit that you've been up the hill almost 50 times. So you're probably one of the most experienced people in this batch. Well, I've been, I've been in a lot of different things. So it's every time you go up, it's a new experience. And, uh, you know, we have dry and wet and muddy. There's everything for you here. Maybe the rally car will be the, the best car for the hill. And we're obviously celebrating the McLaren's anniversary this year. It's an amazing grid of cars they've got, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, not only the road cars are here, some race cars, F1 cars. Uh, there's a lot of McLarens for everybody who loves McLaren to come and see. Brilliant. Cheers. Thank you. And I'll tell you something. I might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a mess. I've been in love. This is history being made here at the Festival of Speed. A big moment then, Wayne Rainey leads the grid. Everybody at trackside, it is a sight to behold. You would not believe that this man is paralyzed from the chest downwards.
Pamela, what a treat for me, because you were the chief engineer on this car, the, the hydrogen-powered um, INEOS. Uh, just tell us a little bit about it, because it's great to see. I mean, um, we did this because it's a, it's a really uh, a, a no-compromise, uh, no-emission car, and uh, I think fuel cell is the future for the Grenadier. Full off-road, no compromise, and uh, yeah, really goes well. And what's the performance like compared to, the, I'd say, standard version, but the fueled version? I mean, this is a demonstrator, so it's a little bit less. But for a serial car, we're targeting the same things, it's the same no compromise. So the, the performance will be the same as in an internal combustion engine. And in terms of torque, it will be massive because I think we're targeting around about 18,000 or even more newton meter of torque uh, for the serial car. So that's massive. And... Uh, I really enjoy driving it. Even this one, as a demonstrator, has more than 8,000 newton meters of torque. Yeah, goes okay. well. <laughs> Incredible. As an engineer, though, this must be your dream, to be given a brief like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's really cool because we were able to choose out of several technologies. The target was no compromise and no emission. And um, in the end, we found out fuel cell is the right technology for that kind of car. And we're really happy to have the, our baby here. Uh, and to drive it. Fantastic, Pamela. Thank you so much. Thank you. Paul, there's a big smile on your face, and I think you can just see a little bit of smoke still coming off the tyres. Looks like you're having fun. Well, if you can still get a bit of tyre smoke in the wet, then you're doing all right, aren't you? It's absolutely phenomenal. This is the uh, new Mustang Dark Horse, um, so it's the first time I've driven it, and, uh, yeah, it definitely gets the adrenaline going. You've got a fair amount of power, haven't you? Yeah, it's uh, almost 500 brake horsepower, I believe. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, was, I was respectful given the conditions. But equally, it's hard not to have fun, isn't it? It is quite a narrow hill climb on which to have fun. Yeah. Now, I made the most of it off the start line. We were sideways for most of the, uh, the first, first stretch of the run. But, um, no, thoroughly enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, a pleasure to be back here at Goodwood. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Test me. I might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a messy. Continue straight ahead. In 40 yards, do not turn left or right. Do not follow the crowd. Just drive. You have reached your destination. You are home. You're never too young to fall in love with classic cars. It's a passion that lasts a lifetime, and it's a passion we share. Backed by over 75 years of motoring experience, Goodwood Classic Solutions is a unique new way to ensure your pride and joy. Goodwood Classic Solutions. It's a passion we share.
here we go. A Guinness World Record attempt. Terry Grant on two wheels. The clock has started. Can he get to the top on two wheels? And if so, can he do it in less than two minutes and 55 seconds? Just think about this. You've got to maintain the balance. This isn't in a straight line. This is climbing all the time. You've got right-handers. You've got left-handers. Now up the straight. The road getting steeper and steeper at this point. Now this is the tricky bit. Let's hold our breath for him. Let's wish him well because he goes through the right. Now the left. This is where he got the wheels on the wall earlier on. He's nearly there, he's nearly there, he's nearly there. The chequered flag is at the ready for a two-wheeling Terry Grant. How about that? Another famous face here at Goodwood Festival of Speed, former racing driver and F1 safety car driver Bert Mylander joins me now here with a fleet of Mercedes-Benz. Bert, how are you enjoying Goodwood so far? Well, it's always uh, it's great to be here. I haven't been here the last uh, couple of years, and uh, even in that just yeah three or four years, but it changed. It's un unbelievable. So uh, that's fantastic, fantastic to be back with uh, cars like that. It's always. Uh, you know, you get nervous if you just talk about these cars. And that's, uh, I think, the, the spirit of this event. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's growing and uh, we have so many race fans and luckily they are all around us uh, and have the chance to chat us, talk about old times, to talk about the future, so it's great. And we're very used to seeing you drive a Mercedes, albeit at a Formula One track in the safety car. We're used to seeing each other in the paddock, now in the rain at Goodwood. This is your favorite Mercedes behind us, isn't it? Well, I, I drove the car already a couple of times, not here in Goodwood this year, but uh, yes, the 300 SLR, uh, the car where Sterling, Sterling Moss made his historical things in 1955 during the Mille Miglia. It's fantastic. And talk about these stories. It's, uh, and each car has so much of glamour and stories behind. And to keep this uh, awake uh, all the time, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, if you ask me which my favorite car, I would say yes, the 300 SLR. It's an outstanding car. But you are not taking this one up the hill, sadly, but this one over here? Yeah, correct. The, the, the big one, the, um, that's a Mercedes 300 SEL, 6.3-litre. Uh, um, that was a car like um, a Mercedes AMG won the first race, or historical race, at a 24-hour race in Spa. That's a prototype of that uh, from, the same, um, from the same time. I, drove this, I will drive this car late afternoon uh, today, and uh, yeah, looking forward. Last time we had a proper chat, you drove me around for a hot lap in Canada in quite similar conditions to this. You're, you very much enjoy driving in the rain. Uh, well, I would say I think for the fans here in Goodwood would be, would be nicer if it's dry. And uh, yeah, but also wet conditions are quite tricky, uh, even a little bit more. Uh, speed is slower, but uh, as an X-race driver, you have to handle all the conditions. And, uh, but hopefully it's dry so I can go a little bit quicker. <laughs> yeah, of course, get that throttle right down. Uh, now, obviously, we're celebrating this year 50 years of the safety car in Formula One. Here at Goodwood, there are so many celebrations. 75 years of motorsport here, 75 years of Porsche, uh, 60 years of McLaren. It's a truly special celebration as someone who's been involved in motorsport for so long. It must be brilliant to be here for this year especially. 
Yeah, I think any uh, every anniversary is something special. And uh, yeah, you, if, if you look to the history of racing and in racing get developed many things uh, for, for road cars. And that's a safety aspect. Uh, that's a racing aspect because you can do many things much quicker. And I think, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a quite important uh, kind to, to make things better, to improve things. And uh, that's exactly what motorsport stays for as well, for sure, as a competition as well. And uh, to celebrate with all car manufacturers, it doesn't matter which brand, each brand has done something good and that's a important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Celebrations look to the past and a nod to the future. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy your thank runs you. up the hill. Yeah, thank you very much. See you in Budapest. See you there. <laughs> at Goodwood at the hill, the British Hill Climb champion, as Marcus says, so on his way up the hill, streaking past Dublin House, as ever, neat, tidy, but oh so rapid, through Molko in the moment, turning through that left-hander there, perfection of line and speed supreme, up the hill then, up toward the wall now, sparks flying as the car bottoms briefly, heading up through the wall, over 43 point, not through the past the wall, 43.57 seconds, and coming up towards the finish now, 38, 39, 40.7, 41, 42, 42, 42.9. So another four tenths taken off, five tenths taken off. Tremendous run that by Graham White Jr. That is just over a second slower than Nick Heitfeld did four years ago in a Grand Prix McLaren Mercedes. One of those ideas which we had no idea how, how good or bad it was going to be until we did it. And of course, Dougie, well, he made a fantastic job of it. as it was this morning, but 
more rubber and less dust on the track than this morning. Visually, unbelievably dramatic up to Malcolm. He said this morning he thought his run was going to be slower because he used a different gear, ended up being quicker. Lots of cheering, clapping and waving from the crowd on the exit of Malcolm. Pashing through the S's and past the wall, back out into daylight. It's going to be very close, but not quite as quick. Yes, it is. It is quicker. Absolutely extraordinary. Another absolutely wonderful pre-war car we've uh, shown for the first time since it was rebuilt, the Festival Speed, was the S76 Fiat, the great beast of Turin. And obviously everyone who's seen it just goes mad for it. It's such a wonderful thing, spitting flames out of it. Sounds like a kind of load of gravel being poured into a cement mixer or something. It's an incredible thing. Duncan Pitaway's done a wonderful job to get that, you know, get the engine back, get the engine from Fiat, find the chassis. I think the FX chassis still had the brakes attached to it, so it did have some original um, bits and pieces still attached to it. And then obviously to get it going, and he drives it, he drives it so well. I've been up the hill with him a couple of times in it now, and I mean, it's a pretty hairy experience. I mean, you have to actually have to sit to one side because the the flames, you're on the side of the of the exhaust pipe, the flames come whistling down past your ear and set fire to your hair if you're not careful.
Ferdinand Porsche, we're here celebrating 75 years of Porsche. Um, it must be pretty special for you. It is very special. It's my first time at FOS, actually. I've only been to a revival and members meet, and driving up a 550 today was really something I will remember. And have you sort of spoken to some of the drivers and things about their experiences of, of driving your grandfather's cars? Um, a lot of them. Mo most of them are happy with the cars. <laughs> um, and I can relate to that. I mean, I grew up on all the Porsche parades and all the festivals, so I really grew up like close to the brand and um, as a fan myself somehow. And um, it's really cool to experience everything uh, that, that has happened around the 75th anniversary now and just like the lineup here today is, is really something great. And you said that a very kind and trusting friend lent you this car behind us. Yes, that's why I was the slowest man up the hill today. Um, but that's okay, I, I, I smiled and waved. No, it was really, it was a lot of fun. The car uh, was really cool to drive up here. The sound was epic. Watching everybody, um, the spectators and the cars in front of the round was really something I will remember. Fantastic. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew, another festival of speed and another run in a car you've you've probably seen but never driven before. Uh, the car I had on the bedroom wall when I was a kid. You know, this car won the Dakar in 1984. Never sat in it until about, well, about five minutes ago, really and uh, just come up the hill in the wet. It's perfectly suited to these conditions. It's fantastic. It's just skiddy and it's not that quick, but it's, um, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be in. And Porsche has kind of bring out, brought out a newer version of this. Yeah, there's the new Dakar, which, uh, which I have driven, and I've driven um, in the desert, um, which, is, yeah, it's, it's a 911, but it's got raised suspension, it's got off-road tyres, and you can just go hooning around the place, having a wonderful time in it. But it is all down to this car. Who'd have thought that, whatever it is, nearly 40 years later, they'd still be, you know, enjoying the legacy that this car provided. I, I don't know how you sleep at night, Andrew, with such a tough life that you lead. I hope you're having a good weekend. I was on a 936 yesterday, and I'm in a 91730 tomorrow. I want people to feel very sorry for me. <laughs> very lucky boy. Well, enjoy it. Thanks so much. Timo, you're sat here at the top of the paddock with what can only be described as one of the sort of best views in Porsche history, um, but you're aboard something quite special as well. Yes, 100%. I mean, first of all, I'm very honored to be here back again. And in the 75th year of Porsche Sports Cars, it's a, a special anniversary for us. So to have the Porsche Parade is great. And this is my Lamont winning car from 2017. So very good memories and just, yeah, honored to be here. And you, you obviously don't get to drive it that much anymore. It's only events like this. But does everything kind of just immediately fit and make sense? 100%, yes, for sure. I'm, these, these things coming back. I mean, a few items are missing, but still, I mean, the, the car itself, I mean, great memories, and it also comes back instantly, you know, stepping into the seat here back again. Yeah. Porsche is very well known for making sort of very usable cars, but just I'm trying to look out of your windscreen at the moment, and the visibility is well, it's almost zero. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, in the rain, it's even a bit worse, but for sure, these cars are made for, for big circuits, for, for Le Mans, you know, for all these iconic racetracks. So it's not built for Goodwood, but still, <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot, but... Uh, I mean, this car's been wonderful. It's so fast, so much downforce, so quick, and it was technological, just uh, the best cars I've, I've, ever, I've ever driven, honestly. Timo, it's great to see it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. In my Tesla, I might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a messy. I've been in love.
arrived at the front door in the middle of the party, and he'd, of course he won the race, which was just spectacular. So he'd come back with in absolute spectacular style. He arrived, this must have been 10 o'clock in the evening. He was in shorts and there's a T-shirt and his hair was, you know, like, like it is. So he was take, whipped upstairs, put his dinner jacket on, came down, and um, I presumed he would, you know, sort of disappear after dinner or something, but not a bit of it. No, he stayed for the show. He was just so enthusiastic and, and um, he was like a boy, really, so excited about it all. I think of all the moments we've had with the crowd at Goodwood and the crowd being caught up in the moment, um, we've had a couple of them, um, but that was one of the, one of the absolute big ones. Yeah. We've been uh, working a little bit in, uh, in the jump, you know. But Is it going to be any good, do you think? Better than last year? Yeah, I think it can be better from last year. How do you think you're going to make it any better? Like that would be good, no? Yeah. I think we have something here. Flying. Big jump. I think we got it, huh? Yeah, okay. Sorry, Thank you can go. go. Sorry. Sorry, see you later.
Thank you very much indeed. Yes, I found David Green once again, and we're down here at the start. Uh, you can hear engines roaring up there. I'm sure you can see the schedule right now on your screens. Lots more to bring you for this afternoon. A wet Friday, but a good Friday here at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Of course, the 30th edition anniversary of this great event, and the rain doing nothing to deter the number of people we're seeing coming in here, David. And we've got an exciting batch about to head up. We're going to try and get some interviews now as well. Batch four plenty to see here. Well, yeah, we've got the MotoGP guys right at the front there. And I've seen some famous faces already. Casey Stoner, Kevin Schwantz. And now we're just having the support team come up, get them bikes ready to go up the hill. As you say, they're not deterred by the weather. They're going to get on with it. And then just behind those guys here, just to our left, we have these marvellous Lotus F1 cars. And this whole parade for the Lotus cars that we've had. We, I just spoke to Clive Chapman earlier on, and he's out there driving the 1979 Mario Andretti, black and gold Lotus car up the hill. He was having a great time. And he, look at the cars here. We've got everything from that amazing history of, of Lotus race cars. Oh, yeah, it's magic, isn't it? McLaren are going to be heading up as well. And there are so many famous names within the entry list here, whether we see them up the hill or not. For the moment, we'll have to go down and see who we can find. But, I mean, the likes of Sebastian Vettel, Oscar Piastri are all here for this Goodwood Festival of Speed. Uh, indeed, Zach Brown's name is amongst it. All they've been, oh, as the rain just comes down very heavily, I was trying to find a tree to shelter under. Um, yes, just it's a who's who, isn't it? When you look through the Grand Prix greats and the Formula One machinery, it's amazing to see. You know, just, seeing, just speaking about Clive, he's there in that car there, in the Mario Andretti car, that's 79, in that famous black and gold livery. Just looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It's fabulous to see. Um, the cars go all the way down here, plenty of umbrellas up, just to hide from the rain. Conditions out there quite, like, quite tricky, aren't they, David? And they're, they're getting trickier, not seeing much drying up here. Well, tricky in a road car. Try driving in a, you know, a 30, 40, 50-year-old F1 car. <laughs> Better them than me, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely would not want to be doing this, um, but these guys are absolute pros, and it's going to be brilliant to see as Batch 4 will make their way up the hill. MotoGP, Lotus, McLaren, Grand Prix greats, Formula One machinery. This is going to be something very special indeed. We'll hand you back now to commentary to take you through all the action.
past isn't something I really think about. I only think about the next race, and I only look into the future. This is the story of a young man from New Zealand. The name, of course, is Bruce McLaren. What's the secret of success? Experience is tremendously important in motor racing. Got one very nasty one indeed. The important thing for me is to drive and to win, and I did that. What a fantastic finish! And it's happened immediately! This is amazing! He had ambitions beyond what I could even understand. I'm going for the stars.
Rene, I don't think it would be the Festival of Speed without you and one of these Renaults. It's great to see you again. Uh, I'm very happy to come back here each year. I think it's 12 years I, I come in a good wood, minimum. <laughs> and I am very happy to drive this car because it's, uh, this car is a, a good uh, memory where I, I, I raced in uh, 79 with this car in Dijon. We have a big war with uh, Gilles and me. And it's rebuilt completely, not uh, after the race. After the race, it was uh, completely rebuilt. <laughs> but uh, Renault Historic rebuilt the car, and uh, it's really uh, nice to come back to Goodwood and to drive this car, this Renault. You mentioned that battle. At, at the time, I guess you probably didn't realise how fantastic that was to watch, because you, all you wanted to do was win. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, it, when I was driving, it was possible. To do, to do not everything, but uh, a lot of things. Now it's, uh, you have a lot of people to see you race you know, with the TV, etc. And, and you, you lose some second, etc., uh, etc. Et but uh, I think if you do the same uh, now, you are directly with, um, <laughs> with your hand, like that. <laughs> anyway. It's changed completely, but uh, I am very good. Gilles was uh, my best friend from Ola One, and uh, I know him when he said, uh, Rene, come with me to eat uh, Italian food. And the next day, Saturday, you go to, to eat the French food with Rene. <laughs> and he was my big, big friend. And you know, it's really important with, uh, when you have uh, in this condition of the race, uh, five laps before the f end in, in Dijon because I know that Gilles is very correct by me, for me and he's, he knows exactly the, the same thing. Rene, thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Good weekend for everybody. I think uh, if it rains or doesn't rain, everybody is there in Goodwood and this is fantastic. Emerson Fittipaldi, we have racing royalty up here. So It's so good to see you. And this is really what Goodwood's all about, isn't it? Getting you back in this M23. No, it's a fantastic time to go back to the M23. It uh, was the first world championship for McLaren. And this year, 60 years of McLaren. And uh, congratulations everybody at McLaren. McLaren had a fantastic race last weekend with Lando Norris and Piastri. And uh, I'm very proud to be a small part of the huge history of McLaren, if you think about Ayrton Senna, Nick Lauda, Alan Prost, James Hunt, all the, all the history McLaren has is fantastic. And this event is unique in the world. Every year I come here is so much, see my friends. You see the past, the present and the future. It's fantastic. And I must ask, when you get back, back behind the steering wheel of of this, does everything feel like it should? It's exactly the same when I drove. It's my seat, still from 1975. Uh, the car feels the same. The steering wheel, the cockpit, is a great car, great car, and uh, even the smell on the cockpit is the same. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Emerson, it's lovely to see you, and have a great weekend. Thank you. God bless. Casey, great to see you again at the Festival of Speed. I was just hearing you had a few bike troubles. Yeah, on the way down to the uh, the park for Mamrie and down to the uh, the start grid, it just decided to cut out. But uh, it's not unusual. Some of these racing machines, they're, they're quite uh, highly strung. And if they're not being ridden fast, they don't like being ridden at all. So, um, yeah, we got it started and off she went and then no hiccups on the way up. And this is the, this is the 2008 bike, I think. Isn't it? And it, it must be lovely getting back on board this because I guess you don't do it very often. No, I haven't seen. I really, I haven't probably seen or ridden this bike since that time since i rode it uh last in 2008 so it's always nice as soon as it goes you can feel that rumble in the engine and you know exactly basically what year it is from how it feels and uh you know we made some big improvements from 07 to this bike and uh you know try to defend our championship best we could so there's a lot of good memories here and obviously the weather isn't perfect but how's the how's the weekend going this this event is always phenomenal it's something i always enjoy coming to there's, there's nowhere else in the world you can get this much history and the modern side of things all into one place. Um, so it's basically, you know, for anybody who's a motorsport fan, it's a candy shop, you know. It's just incredible to walk around, see the cars that you grew up watching, and they're, they're right there for you to see, not only just behind the, the, the barriers, but also we get to see them go up, this, um, up the hill climb. So it's a, it's a pretty special event. Cheers, Casey. Enjoy it. No problem. Thanks. 
Kevin, fantastic to see you again at the Festival of Speeds. Just when you thought it sort of couldn't get any better from a motorcycle perspective, all of this happened. You know, it's, uh, it's great to see modern stuff, older stuff, you know, some, some of the last Suzuki World Champs here. It's, um, it's pretty special. It's quite an unforgiving set of conditions you've got today. <laughs> we didn't ride this morning, and I think maybe this morning might not have been quite as bad as this, but, uh, you know, just take your time coming up the hill. I know everybody would like to see us go a little faster, but with the tires that are on and the power delivery that those old bikes have, it's all we can do to just get it up the hill. You were pretty well known for going sideways in the day, though, weren't you? These are sure you'd be loving these conditions. You know, it, back when there were world championship points on the line, I'd make the most of this, yeah, for sure. Well, no, thanks for chatting and enjoy the weekend. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. To hear them start and then... Breathing new life into broken. Taking matters into your own hands. Assembling big dreams from the small things. Never stopping until you find the right part at the right price. That's the eBay way. And I'll tell you. Sitting in my new sheet, we still get a mess. I've been in love. Rover Velar, designed to intrigue.
you're never too young to fall in love with classic cars. It's a passion that lasts a lifetime, and it's a passion we share. Backed by over 75 years of motoring experience, Goodwood Classic Solutions is a unique new way to ensure your pride and joy. Goodwood Classic Solutions. It's a passion we share. The hill here at Goodwood is one of those iconic bits of motor racing these days. And here I am in the 1962 World Championship winning car. Off I go, Graham Hill won the 1962 World Championship in this wonderful BRM. Through the boulevard of trees, coming up to the first couple of right-handers now. It's a fantastic sight as you come through this bit of the track with the house on the left, this beautiful sculpture at the corner of your eye, but you're firmly focusing on the track, the lines of hay bales with the sea of people behind it. Up in a Malcolm, a tricky left-hander. And as you start to climb up, this amazing view of the flint wall looms ahead. Around the flint wall, give it a wide berth. Be nice and safe. This comes from the Collier collection in America. It is exactly how Graham Hill drove it back in the 60s. To be honest, it's the first Formula One car driven with no seat belts, which is quite extraordinary. I'm bracing myself up against the side of the car to come through the final corner and through the finish line. A fantastic bit of Formula One history to drive here at Goodwood up the hill and show you all of you at home a little bit of just what we see from the cockpit. Emanuele Dindo, it's lovely to see you here. I, this is Emanuele's car, Dindo, that you've just come up in, and he, he spotted a bit of damage on the rear, and he was, that wasn't you, was it? No, it wasn't me. That, that's why he didn't want to drive this car, because it was damaged, and he said, you have to drive the car. <laughs> no, it's nice to be, here, to be here after, I think, 14 years, the last time I was here. Uh, then it's an incredible feeling, and uh, it's always uh, really amazing and emotional to be here. Emanuele, you've just come up in the Matra. What a machine that is. Yeah, of course, you tend to love uh, the motorsport era that triggered your emotions. So I was born in 1962, so uh, when I was like seven, eight, I started really to understand about motorsport. And the Matra that I drive is the winner of 1973. And the Matras were very advanced cars at the time. So, and I never drove a Matra before, so it's, it, it's very emotional. And um, yeah, Gerard LaRousse and Ripes Carolo are two great people and great friends, so it's been a real treat to drive it. And Dindo, when you get back in a car like this, does, do all the memories come flooding back? Yeah, some of the memory came uh, quickly back, 
Uh, I didn't remember the clutch pedal so hard. That's I have to ad admit that <laughs> because here you have to use it many times, and you know, in the tr race track, in the normal track, once you leave the pit, then you don't use it anymore. And uh, yeah, now I'm feel I'm feel I feel a little bit pain on my left, uh, but uh, left leg. But it's fine. Uh, everything was re immediately back, as you said. Even the mapping change and uh, all this stuff. Uh, I thought I forgot everything, but after. After a few seconds, everything was back in my mind. <clears throat> Fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much for coming to both of you. We'll see you over the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao.
Dude. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it all changes quite quickly. <laughs> Alex literally just caught me. Went. Good would have fucked us again. Can you get to the start line right now? <laughs> okay, one more way. One more way, mate. Honestly, I got there and it was like. You know, like, if you'd have had a one shot off.
David, found you here getting a little bit of uh, shelter. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's typical sort of British summertime, isn't it? One moment it's warm and sunny, the next minute it's raining, next moment, you know, they're emptying the glass bottles from all the uh, champagne that's being sprayed. But uh, nonetheless, the, the rain hasn't dampened the spirits of, of those that have come along to see, I think, another fantastic Goodwood. Well, we're celebrating 30 years of Festival of Speed this week. Why do you think people keep coming back despite this glorious July English weather? Uh, because there's nothing like it anywhere in the world. It's a fantastic opportunity for someone like myself to reconnect with people that I've come up through the ranks and, and race with. Still an amazing selection of vehicles here. Uh, there's new tech being celebrated as well, which is always fun to see. And to have all that in, in this incredible you know, house setting uh, makes it uh, you know, a, a totally unique event. Speaking to drivers like yourself, this theme seems to be seeing old friends and then still being really excited about some of the cars that are on display here. Well, they're engineering art and, and something that was beautiful 40 years ago, 50, whatever, the, however many decades you want to go back, it's still beautiful today. And, and there's so many enthusiasts that, that own these, keep them, want to drive them, want to show them off. And I think the little kid in all of us comes out when we actually get them, get to see them demonstrated. Then you've got, of course, all sorts of uh, crazy demos from the drifting guys. And it's just a really celebration of all things mobility. You've got your civvies on today. Will we be seeing you going up the hill at any point over the next few days? Well, I, I have been offered the opportunity, and that's very kind, but I actually feel that when I do that, I miss seeing and watching and enjoying and engaging, so I, I much prefer to actually just sit back and or walk around and, and, and see what's that's going on rather than uh, slipping into the Nomex. I'll leave that to the younger generation. Leave it to the youngers. Enjoy yourself. Keep dry and uh, have a good festival of speed. Thank you very much. Joachim. You've got your suit on, you're ready to drive the SLR this weekend. Looking forward to it? Yeah, absolutely. But I took it, actually, I put it on last night because I sleep in it. So I knew in the morning I have it, I'm wearing it already. I'm having it. Ah, you've got friends want to say hello. <laughs> I think that's a genius idea. Go to sleep, pair of pajamas, and, and then you can put your alarm on 10 minutes later. But you have to sleep alone. <laughs> Is that a problem? It would be. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Let's be serious about things. Serious face now, serious face. What have caught your eye out there at this 30th Festival of Speed, the 30th anniversary of Festival of Speed? I think it's wonderful that we can have it. And uh, the Festival of Speed is always a beautiful event because of a great number of good guys, friends, who you meet again here, so that's, that's wonderful. And I think Festival of Speed has a very established place in the history of Goodwood racing. It was one of the first. Well, you're a stalwart at all of these events, and we're always glad to see you, and you're always smiling, so you must be enjoying it. I am. Uh, luckily, I am, because the people are nice, and you grow older with them. You know, you see them, and uh, you've seen them the last 15, 20 years, and so on, and of course, they remember you, and you remember them, so that's pretty good. And my last question for you. Yeah. Race suit, are you going to be wearing that for the ball or does the tuxedo go on top of the race suit? I'll see if I can put the tuxedo over it. <laughs> I don't have to get out of it. No, no, no. It's uh, tuxedo is just a beautiful idea of creating some festivity <laughs> on top of the rest. You know, you just look better. Well, maybe we'll see you on uh, Sunday morning in your tuxedo. I sincerely hope so. <laughs> Lovely to see you as always. Okay. Thanks. Mick, the rain's coming down a little bit. We're still having fun here, aren't we? No, totally. Well, I haven't been up actually because it's uh, Honda don't want to run the bike in the rain. So I don't know whether they're a bit worried about me or the bike. <laughs> have they been polite and said it's the bike? They have. So, but I mean, it's, I'm old. The bike's getting quite old also. So they're a bit de they're a bit delicate these days. But. Um, but I, I'm not disappointed. Always fantastic to be here. It's just um, unfortunate the weather hasn't been kind for us bikers. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we saw a couple of the uh, GP bikes going up there, and it, it's certainly not easy with oil coming through the track and this crowned road in the wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to be going that quick anyway, so <laughs> I wouldn't be worried about that. But, uh, you know, waving at the crowd, I don't think they've lost too many people. You're still smiling, and uh, anything caught your eye since you've been here? Um... To be honest, I haven't been out and had a look around at the moment, but I mean, there's, there's, there's always a tremendous amount of different products here. So, and, and everything from old uh, vintage cars to the latest 
super hyper cars. So I'm looking forward to getting out there and having a look. And uh, really only arrived here at midday today. So, you know, you're first off the uh, off the blocks. Well, okay. I'm the warm-up act, you know, to get you ready for all the stuff that's out there. Yeah, good one. We're, we're celebrating um, all the, you know, the 30 years of Festival of Speed this year. And all of the drivers and riders still come back year on year. We're talking about why that is. But it's get to see old friends, enjoy yourself. Totally. It's a, it's a great event for that. You know, seeing, we're talking about old friends, the one right behind you there. And um, we've, um, you know, to see some of these old guys, put uh, myself included, <laughs> and younger generation guys coming through, some of the old bikes, cars, whatever, it's fantastic. You know, it is a lot of people out here, a lot of fans of... It's the only place fans can get this close to the bikes, cars and drivers and riders, regardless wherever you are. You know, in F1 you can't get within 100 feet, 100 yards of, of a car and similarly with bikes. So um, so I'm a, I'm a fanboy anyway of motorsport, so it's good to be here. Well, let's hope the sun shines and uh, you might be able to get back on that Honda at some point over the weekend. Well, I'll look forward to it. Cheers. You get up every morning and your car is still the same. Hey. It ain't the one you want, so it's time to make it change. Hey. Choose the one you're feeling with thousands of choice galore. Go ahead and place your order. It's delivered to your door. Or if that ain't what you're after and you'd rather have a chat, hit up a trusted dealer, speak to my pal Pat. Now you got your new ride, what you gonna do? Cause if you buy with Hey Car, the choice is uh -huh. up for you. Hey. Whether you're buying online or through our trusted dealers, feel good your way with Haycar. You're never too young to fall in love with classic cars. It's a passion that lasts a lifetime, and it's a passion we share. Backed by over 75 years of motoring experience, Goodwood Classic Solutions is a unique new way to ensure your pride and joy. Goodwood Classic Solutions. It's a passion we share.
not fastest today, but wow, I mean, those, those conditions are quite difficult. Oh, to say the least, you know, to be going up the hill in a Carrera Cup car, I think just, um, you know, proves how good bits of kit these are. You know, we got beat by a WRC car in a rear-wheel drive car. So um, I think we lost like a second and a half, even off the line, you know, in the rear-wheel drive car. So it's cool. Um, but honestly, the conditions out there are so tough. You know, there's standing water everywhere. So hard to predict what the conditions going to be. So fair play to everyone. That's uh, a yeah, great this afternoon. It's rallying weather. Let's go. I can see back at Jake Hill. Jake, come on in. Um, someone asked when you came up whether you used full throttle, and you, you did. Quite impressive. Yeah, I was, I was a gear up in the air just to try and not break traction. Um, but yeah, so it was third gear for the most part of every corner we were going through. But no, it was good. Um, the car felt pretty stable. We put the brand new Rex on just because the water standing water was so much. So um, definitely the right call, I think, because there's an awful lot of water on the hill at the minute. But yeah, it was actually quite a comfortable place to be in my car. So sounds nicer than Adam's, that's for sure. And Adam, you, you obviously had wets on, but did you change any of the settings or you just got dry settings? Yeah, we ran it a little bit softer. Um, but to be honest, I think the beauty of these cup cars is you can't actually change that much, really. Um, we run on the wets in the dry as well. So it was a little bit challenging, uh, but yeah, the car feels fantastic. As Jake said, it is not easy. It's very busy, but it's just uh, you know, managing the risk reward, I suppose. Well done, guys. So, look, I think we've got cars running again, so we'll go back down the hill. Cheers. Thank you.
Ots, the weather is certainly rallying weather, and you were fastest by about half a second. <laughs> That's quite impressive. Seems like Puma can still fly, so uh, yeah, definitely uh, weather was helping us. If you see the Formula cars around us, then uh, yeah, it was in our favour. Yeah, I mean, I, the weather doesn't look great tomorrow, so I guess it's all to play for again. You were quicker than uh, Thierry as well. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Malcolm's uh, time to drive, so uh, let's see if he can beat my time and uh, yeah, keep the fastest time. Well, well done. Thank you. In my Tesla, I might get arrested. She's sitting in my new sheet. We still get a messy. I've been in love. You get up every morning and your car is still the same. Hey. It ain't the one you want, so it's time to make a change. Hey. Choose the one you feel with thousands of choice galore. Go ahead, play shot that's delivered to your door. Or if that ain't what you're after and you'd rather have a chat, hit up a trusted dealer, speak to my pal Pat. Now you got your new ride, what you gonna do? Cause if you buy with Hey Car, the choice is uh -huh. up for you. Hey. Whether you're buying online or through our trusted dealers, feel good your way with Haycar. Intuitive technology, intelligent all-wheel drive, and the performance of a Jaguar. Search F-Pace. Nineteen ninety-nine. Ron and the team decided they were going to go for the record. Nick Heidfeld was the test driver. Nick obviously felt very up for it. And I think McLaren, well, I know for sure that a few team principals made it very clear to Nick he needed to do the business.
I'm here at the cricket pitch at Goodwood Festival of Speed and I've been um, enchanted over really by these incredible portraits of some of the legends of motorsport, legendary racing drivers and the photographer herself, Indira Flack, is here next to me now. Tell me the story behind these. Well, I first came to Goodwood in 1994 um, to the second Festival of Speed and that was my first foray into sort of motorsport as such. I'm a portrait photographer, so it's the people that is more important to me than the cars. And um, so I came and, and photographed a little bit at, Good, at Goodwood. And then in 2014, I decided I needed a bit of a project. And um, I was coming back to Goodwood, having had a break. And I thought, well, racing drivers. My partner suggested racing drivers, as I was going to be here, surrounded by legends of the sport. And I thought, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Um, I'd, I'd had a previous commission by Country Life magazine, great, the Great British Hobby. And that's where the idea came from, Great British Racing Drivers. And uh, Goodwood was the ideal place to speak to them all. Absolutely. You have such good access here, don't you? It's one yeah. of the charms of the Festival of Speed and indeed all, all of the Goodwood events. Um, this book in your hand, Great British <laughs> Racing Drivers. Now, tell us about this as well, because not only is it fantastic portraits throughout, brilliant portraits of just about everyone you can think of uh, in the world of motorsport, it also has a greater purpose, doesn't it? It does. Um, we're in support of Race Against Dementia, which, of course, is Jackie Stewart's um, uh, charity. And that's because my partner, Paul, his father um, sadly died of dementia. And we just thought it was an appropriate charity to, to support. And also because we could have its founder in, in the project and in the book, which is lovely. Yeah, absolutely fabulous. And I'm very sorry to hear that. But I'm sure the work that you're doing now would make him very proud indeed. And, and how much interest have you had here at Goodwood so far? Because these photographs really do draw you in. We've had a fair amount of interest. We've, we've sold a few copies, which is lovely. That's what we always want to do. And um, yeah, lots of people have been over and we've been speaking to them and telling them the stories behind the pictures. Of course, all the stories behind the pictures are in the book as well. So you get that, that little bit of interest as well. Um, but it's, it's been lovely being on the cricket pitch. It's, it's a fantastic spot and um, I'm very grateful for good, to Goodwood and the Duke for letting me um, have the exhibition here. Well, we're very grateful you are here. It's absolutely stunning. Thank you so much, Indira. And hopefully you sell a lot more copies and raise some money for charity as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. second year at Goodwood at the hill, the British Hill Climb champion, as Marcus says, so on his way up the hill, streaking past Goodwood House, as ever, neat, tidy, but oh so rapid, through Molko in the moment, turning through that left-hander there, perfection of line and speed supreme, up the hill then, toward the wall now, sparks flying as the car bottoms briefly, heading up through the wall, over 43 point, not through the past the wall, 43.57 seconds, and coming up towards the finish now, 38, 39, 40.7, 41, 42, 42, 42.9. So another four tenths taken off, five tenths taken off. Tremendous run that by Graham White Jr. That is just over a second slower than Nick Heitfeld did four years ago in a Grand Prix McLaren Mercedes.
one of those ideas which we had no idea how, how good or bad it was going to be until we did it. And of course, Dougie, well, he made a fantastic job of it. as warm this time as it was this morning, but more rubber and less dust on the track than this morning. Visually unbelievably dramatic up to Malcolm. He said this morning he thought his run was going to be slower because he used a different gear, ended up being quicker. Lots of cheering, clapping and waving from the crowd on the exit of Malcolm. Pashing through the S's and past the wall, back out into daylight. It's going to be very close, but not quite as quick. Yes, it is. It is quicker. Absolutely extraordinary. This beautiful car next to me here is the Lola de Cadenet. Now, it's a car made famous by the man who bears its very name, Alain de Cadenet, who was third at Le Mans in this exquisite vehicle next to me here. And the man who owns it is alongside me as well. Come over here, Henrik. Lindbergh joins me now. Talk to me about this car and the special characteristics. This car has a fantastic history. It was uh, designed by Lola in uh, 75, did Le Mans. There was only two cars, one went to Italy and this one, Mr. De Cadenet, he bought it. And uh, he put in an old Formula One engine, actually cost what, number 13? Yeah. And uh, he went to Le Mans together with Mr. Chris Craft and the car was too slow at the straight. So they went home and uh, they get in contact with Mr. Gordon Murray and uh, asked Mr. Gordon Murray to redesign the body. And he made a completely new body, much smaller, and uh, in my opinion, much nicer. And uh, at that time, they didn't have a lot of money. So uh, to test how efficient the new design was, they added on number plates, and then they were testing the car at an M25 in the nighttime. <laughs> and uh, there was a story that there was a lorry uh, with milk, a carrier, and he, he, he got overtaken uh, with a car that he said it was a rocket. And that was this car was around 300 kilometers an hour. And he, phoned, he, he stopped the car and he went in, get the phone, phoned the police and told them about the story. But at that time, they have already taken the car off the, off the road and covered it and put it on the trailer and, uh, and that's it. And uh, I was so lucky to, to, to meet uh, Alain and, and, uh, and, and Chris at the Classic of the Mong the first time, uh, what was that, eight, nine years ago. And uh, as soon as I stood next to the car, um, Mr. Mr. Chris Craft, he, he took off, he took his, uh, his, he shows his ankle. And it was a total burn from that time, a scar. And that was because of the tube, water tube was running next to the, to the throttle pedal, yes. And I can tell you, it's the hottest car I've never, ever been in. It's really, really, really hot. Yeah. It's, it's open, but it's more hot than a Group C. But it is a fantastic history. Yeah. And it's five times Le Mans. It's incredible and amazing to hear so much of its rich history there as well. Thank you so much, Henrik. Um, now, Elaine passed away last July. Desiree Wilson alongside me here. You were his co-driver um, for many of the races we've just heard about, um, for the Le Mans and so on. Tell me, what was he like as a driver, as a friend, as a person? Oh, um, Elaine was one of, I guess, my best friends, um, best racing teammate, car owner I've ever had. And we remained friends most of our lives. And 
during um, the racing period, he was so professional and he helped me so much in the car because I hadn't driven these type of cars before. And um, he gave me so much knowledge that we could uh, go out and win two world championship races, although not in this particular car, in one year uh, later. Um, and, but as a person, he was so much fun. Everybody loved Alan. He was just just a darling to be around and I'm so proud and honoured to be driving in his name today. And we're very glad to have you here. By all accounts, he was such a character. And Aidan, his son, can join me now just as the rain comes down a little bit harder here. Um, how proud are you that Desiree will be driving this car that he was third in Le Mans at here at Goodwood and to be standing here celebrating his life? You know, it's, it's, it's one of the most emotional and uh, fantastic just day I've had in quite a, quite a while, to be honest. And if there's one thing Des knows, it's racing in the wet. And uh, she's used to some water coming down on the track, but it really is such a joy to be here, just to be able to see the car with the owner and the driver. And um, of course, I, I miss him every day and uh, love to be able to continue the legacy in a way and be here and do everything that he would have wanted me to do. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, what a special moment. What a special day. Thank you so much, you much. all three of you, for sharing it with us. Yeah. Enjoy.
Alex, we're sheltering under here from the rain, um, but the rain doesn't seem to make any difference to your McMurtry. Uh, psychologically, yeah, but uh, no, the grip's amazing. I mean, the car's fabulous, as we saw last year, but when you have downforce all the time, it's quite easy to get temperature and things, and you get that immediate bite that gives you the confidence, even from a low speed. So, uh, yeah, it's stunning, absolutely stunning. You're a hill climber. You're used to setting off without much grip. <laughs> yeah, definitely this season. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's similar. I mean, it's a lot faster in the straights and there's a lot more, uh, you know, going on. But it's uh, it's a familiar feeling and I think that's why, why the car's so quick, you know, for, and that's why we get on with it so well. So. And obviously last year it was such an amazing weekend for McWurtry, yourself and Max. Uh, what was it like in the weeks after that? Did you get a lot of feedback? I, I went to work and people would look at me and go, what? <laughs> um, so it was a lot of that. But no, it was lovely. I mean, you know, the team worked really hard to get the car ready and it was so much effort and of course we didn't know it was going to go that well and and definitely when it broke down on me in my first run it was oh, you know but the team deservedly very happy a lot of exposure for for us personally as drivers and max with what he did um but for the brand it's been great you know we've got new partners on board so it's been brilliant you know it's been a great thing and that's what what good we can do for small brands like mcmurtry you know so well, well done and thanks for bringing it up thank you very much cheers in my test, I might get arrested. She's sitting on my new sheet. We still get a messy. I've been in love. them starred and then honestly it makes my heart sing i can't stop smiling well everybody said it's so exciting you get to see all these cars not just look at them but you get to see them in action that's cool goodwood revival is all about make do and mend vintage style not vintage values and of course sustainability not only is there the motor racing, but it's everything else. The shopping, it's the fanfare, it's the look, it's the period, and that is what the Good Revival is. It's just a fantastic day out.
<laughs> Good morning, hello, and welcome to Goodwood 2023. This is the Action Sports Arena. You're a bit late. We've been uh, working a little bit in, uh, in the jump, you know. But Is it going to be any good, do you think? Better than last year? Yeah, I yes. think it can be better from last year. How do you think you're going to make it any better? Like that will be good, no? Yeah. I think we have something here. A flying. Big jump. I think we got it, huh? Yeah, OK. Sorry, Thank you. can go. Sorry. Sorry, see you later. Damon Hill, you never quite know who you're going to see, and especially now it's raining and people aren't getting out of cars. It was a lovely surprise to see the Thames rowing colours. Um, quite an important car to take up the hill in the wet. It's very important. I mean, talk about seeing. I've got the windscreen wipers don't work. Uh, it fogs up. I've got this damp cloth, which I can just about wipe a bit of fog away. Um, and so uh, it was a bit of an experience coming up. Uh, you have to go fast enough to get the raindrops come off the screen. I was a bit concerned about that, but... But it's got a tremendous history, 1963-64, uh, winning at the Mall. Uh, was it second at the Mall? And, uh, anyway, uh, Tony Maggs, Innes Island. My dad drove this. My dad won the TT in it. So it's got an incredible uh, history. And Mike, is it Mike Parks? No. Yes, it also raced it, I think. So um, I'll just check, actually. I've got my glasses on. Yeah, got... This is a very useful plate on the... On the uh... 
uh, on the uh, gearbox. Yeah, that's right. So it's got this plaque with all the history of it. So very, very valuable car with a great racing heritage and a very distinctive colour scheme as well. I don't feel about the... Uh, I don't know how Ferrari took to the blue stripe down it, but um, <laughs> a departure from the pure red that they normally have. Now, I, I might get this wrong, but you've recently been doing a sort of charitable endeavour on a bicycle, have you not? I have. Um, I've been up... Uh, I've done a leg of the Tour de France. Actually, it's before... So they do this leg that I did uh, last Sunday, tomorrow, and it was from Annemasse to Morzine. And it's 14,000 feet of climbing and 100 miles, and uh, 16,000 cyclists do it. And I started nearly 7,000, and I got overtaken by about 3,000 people. So <laughs> I, I'm not a competitive cyclist, let's be honest. Um, but I did the distance, and I did it for Halo. Um, so if you go on my Instagram, which is... 96 F1 champ, I think. Um, I don't even know what it is. Hang on, I think it's... That's oh, right, people will find it. Instagram, yeah, I've got a link to uh, a fundraising page, so I'm, I'm pretty uh, pleased to have done that. And, um, yeah, thanks for listening, as they say. Damon, thank you. Pleasure, thank you.
Well, I've got everyone here. Bagsy, let's start with you. Uh, perfect weather for drifting. <laughs> so you would imagine, but you know, we're just doing the best we can to get up the hill and keep the cars in one piece. If it's dry, I feel like I speak for all of us, we could definitely put on a better show. I wouldn't say any of us would probably say that was our best run up the hill, but I think we all celebrated when we made it up. We tried to get, it, get into the drift carner up here, but that was our first go at it. Um, and I feel like as the weekend progresses or the days progress at a festival that it's going to get better and better but that was a case of uh, do or die and I think we all made it so uh, we're all good right <laughs> Mike let's come to you that's uh, you watched a bit of the few of the replays there um, anyone you thought was particularly good I, well we all stayed on the track and we didn't damage the grass so that's a big bonus last time I drove this track wet I had uh, the Duke of Richmond in my passenger seat in the RX-8 so I was so nervous like just not to touch the grass but yeah made it to the top Excellent. Axel, um, what do you think of the new course up here? Because it does look pretty small and technical. Yeah, hitting it in the wet the first time blind wasn't maybe the best. <laughs> Definitely in the wrong gear. Uh, but yeah, I think it'd be much, much better the rest of the weekend, hopefully. So hopefully that was the only wet one and uh, we'll get better from here. Peter, you look very tidy. It all looked very controlled out there. Oh, really? It doesn't feel like from the inside, to be honest. But it was, uh, yeah, it was a quite a mess from the inside. I didn't see anything. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. But, um, you know, it happens that I dumped the clutch and I was in correct spot. So... Fingers crossed, we'll be all right. <laughs> Excellent, well, a cracking effort from all of you. Um, all smiles, everyone stayed on the track, so well done.
great stuff. Thank you very much to Alex and Bruce. And we are still sheltering out here from the rain, which is coming down more and more heavily as the afternoon progresses here in the beautiful Drivers Club as well, where the great, the good, the infamous names of motorsport are so often found. Uh, we're going to forget the hill climb for just a moment, just a moment, of course. And we're going to head over to the rally stage. And that is where you will see a fair more spills and thrills and indeed a lot of mud, certainly in conditions like this. We've got Rally Shootout 1 coming up very soon with your commentary team.
test me, might get arrested, she's sitting on my new sheet, we still getting messy. I've been in love. What a fantastic day it's been up here, despite the weather. We've had some incredible performances with the drift cars and what a shootout we had. To have a rally car winning the shootout today on times is fairly fantastic, but it does give you a clue as to what the weather was like. I can't wait to get stuck in yet again tomorrow because we're going to do it all over again. I'll see you then. Thank you very much indeed to Ed. We will see him tomorrow on top of the hill while David and I have enjoyed a wet, wild, pretty windy day. We've just turned an umbrella inside out, getting into our position here. But it's quite the position, isn't it? We're in front of the Ferrari Le Mans winning cards, taking in the very last of all that Google has to offer, even at 7 p.m. at night. This thing's attracting huge attention. As you can see, it's still dirty from its Le Mans win. Fairy tale win, centenary Le Mans. 50 years since Ferrari raced there in the top tier, and they came back and took the top step. Great story for them, and great to have this at the Festival of Speed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we'll be having um, a Le Mans moment with Ferrari on the balcony tomorrow. Sebastian Vettel moment on the balcony as well. An F1 great four-time world champion and an extraordinary legacy both on and off the track as well. What else have we got to look forward to, David? Well, we've got all the cars coming out again. We'll have the shootout. We'll get really heightened tension tomorrow. Maybe it gets drier. We'll see some real indicative times, maybe see the form of that the top 10, top 20. And there, uh, you know, we've got lots more cars, lots more first class, lots more supercars, which I always like to say. Yeah, the supercars are going to be exciting, aren't they? Um, we are going to go and get dry. Well done to all who have braved the conditions today here at Goodwood Festival of Speed. It has been brilliant to bring you all the action. And we will see you again tomorrow. We'll be on air at 8.20 a.m. So do join us then. For now, though, a very warm goodbye. Yeah.